This is sort of nod to kind of the the, the pack shot, yeah. effectively, right? With him looking at the Mako reactor. Um, yeah. So there's the there's the pack shot, that classic shot of Cloud holding his his Buster sword and looking up at at the the Shinra tower. Uh, that scene right there, where it's looking up at reactor mm -hmm. number one, that is almost like a complete like a one to one recreation of a scene from the original bombing. Ah, room. right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Midgar. You got it's beautiful Tim and Kristen here from PlayStation, and we are joined by special guests Neil and Jarek, who are from Square Enix's marketing team. Thank you for joining us, guys. Hey guys. Thank you so much Hello. for having us. We're super excited to be here. We are also super excited to be checking out Final Fantasy VII Remake. Uh, just uh, can't really overstate how uh, highly <laughs> anticipated this game is. Uh, you know. And just already how emotionally, like, I never even finished Final Fantasy VII, but even, like, the beginning of this game is pulling at my heartstrings right. a little bit. And that's exactly what we're checking out. We're, we're checking out a demo for the game, which kind of features the first, you know, bombing mission, like, just the iconic intro, um, you know, section of the game. Yeah. This is the intro. So for, for those fans out there, it's going to be very recognizable. Mm -hmm. But for someone who never played the original, great point to jump in. Yeah, and that's actually, you know, you mentioned that... Um, sort of what what do you think about this remake specifically is it just makes it such a great sort of jumping on point for folks that maybe didn't get a chance to check out the original back in 97. So we know based on the iconic status of the original a lot of people have heard about Final Fantasy 7 yeah. but maybe they never had a chance to play it. This is now an entirely new opportunity for those people to jump in because we're reintroducing the world, we're reintroducing the characters. It really is the perfect starting yeah. point. Yeah. Look at this detail, it's too. It's stunning. It really is. Uh, and it's just, you know, it, it is, is a, a personally, you know, as a fan of the original and just how engrossing and inviting and mysterious that world is, it's like everything I've seen about this remake is just like, is what you would expect from a, a, just a huge remake that um, invites you back in. Uh, and then you have the classic, like, just the <laughs> the train cutting in here. Uh, this this intro is just like, I don't know, burned into my memory. Um, <laughs> look yeah. at the detail on the train. I was going to say, for someone who, you know, I, I had missed this game when it first came out. I was a little too young. Uh, so I, I feel like I sort of missed having this, this cultural moment with it. And I, from the moment that remake was announced, I was like, I'm finally going to get it. I'm finally going to understand, like, why this has been just dominating so many people's hearts over the years. Mm -hmm. The time is near. That's right. We, we are we're coming up on it. Um, and it's just I, the, de the details of, like, the, like these, these soldiers here also just, like, it... As a fan of the original, you know, it's, it's reminiscent of those uh, classic character models, but just has expanded and more detail and rich and kind of what I remember from my mind's eye. Yeah, the character designs in the original were, were pretty great. Um, obviously, quite a few, quite a uh, fewer polygons on yeah. those, yeah. those originals, <laughs> um, but the team has so much passion and so much love, and they're staying so true, but just like making this bigger and larger than life. Right. Right. Absolutely there he is. amazing. Oh, Boom. our boy. <laughs> Cloud with his modest that hair. Just, I, I wonder how much time he spends on that in the morning, you know. Uh, and so, one thing to call out specifically, you know, this is the beginning of the game, mm -hmm. so you're going to see some tutorials pop up. Uh, Jarek's going to be jamming through that. He's yeah. uh, he's on the sticks. Uh, he's a total professional. Uh, he's going to take care of these guys. Uh, we'll kind of talk about yeah. various things, you know, some combat strategies, uh, but also maybe some things that you know, if you're running through the levels, you might not totally notice right off the bat. Yeah. If you played Crisis Core, you might have just seen a Benora White poster. That's oh, kind of wow. a throwback. Man, it's been a hot minute since. Uh, but yeah, that's that's cool. So what was Benora White in? in Benora Crisis? White, colloquially known as a dumb apple. <laughs> uh, and then you can see the the poster yeah. right there on the on the right. Um, it's kind of there's the game is full of these things yeah. that someone who's familiar with the world is going to pick up on and really appreciate. That's so cool. But if you're new, it's not like you're missing out. Yeah. It's all just flavor to help that's build so out fun. the world. And speaking of just sort of like building out the world, like it's so detailed, and the combat itself is so so you know richly detailed. The thing that really stuck with me when I got a chance to play it previously was just this that slowdown effect we're seeing, 
And, you know, as a, as a fan of the Final Fantasy series, I know that there's been lots of different combat, you know, uh, mechanics. Some pause combat, you know, as you are selecting different characters or choosing, you know, different abilities or, or spells. And it, it freezes combat. And that, that worked for those games. But this does something totally different where the momentum keeps building. Like, can you talk a little bit about how this stands apart um, and this, what we're seeing specifically? Yeah, and I think the, the combat is really one of the, the, the standout features of the game, uh, especially when you compare it to either other Final Fantasies or other other uh, RPGs. Yeah. Um, and the dev team really, they had a challenge going into this because the original combat system from 23 years ago is, is iconic. Mm -hmm. People yeah. love it. So how do you take that um, stay true to the original, but also make it feel modern. Yeah. And the inclusion of tactical mode, I think, is really the perfect way to do it. So you can you can see as Jarek's roaming around the field, he encounters enemies. Uh, he'll attack, dodge, and block in real time, uh, and he's building up these ATB charges uh, that then he can use in tactical mode. It looks so, so good. So what's Soldier Boy's deal? Is he one of us now? He's got balls. This. Uh uh, what was his name again? They're talking uh, about his materia, right? right? Is that right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like lots of material. Yeah. Still, he's a professional, unlike the rest of us. I'm glad just to just can't him. get over the detail here. Yeah. It's it's wild seeing them fully this realize. This is a one-time gig. When it's done, we're done. Uh, sure. And seeing their sure. personalities yeah. come yeah. out even more, it's just oh, I love it. It's fun to uh, you know. Um, to see the, the personalities sort of like um, fleshed out and obviously voice acting now, which is is a, is a change um, from the original. And like, I've been just so impressed by how how fitting it all is. And even just down to the way they dialogue and we'll see some banter between Barrett and Cloud later. That's just spot on. I love this little sequence too, because uh, you know, Cloud's interacting with, with Wedge, but meanwhile, Jesse and Biggs are kind of having this little sidebar conversation, uh, adding all of this backstory and flavor yeah. text to the world. And I love Barrett. He's Wedge. the best. Uh, uh, <laughs> You better be worth the money, Merc. Every last gill. Oh, yeah, it's the beginning of their relationship and just sort of like feeling each other out a little bit. I, I love just even the detail. I know it's kind of like gnarly, but like where his, where his, you know, arm. gun, his yeah. gun arm begins and ends. It's just like a little like you can see a little echo of the story attached to that and um, that detail. And then there's a sort of nod to kind of the the, cut, the pack shot yeah. effectively right with him looking at the mako reactor um, yeah so there's the there's the pack shot that classic shot of cloud holding his his buster sword and looking up at at the the shinra tower uh, that scene right there where it's looking up at reactor mm -hmm. number 1 that is almost like a complete like a one to one recreation of a scene from the original bombing ah run. right so cool and and speaking of the you know the the bombing run here um, so the stakes are basically if i you know Talk a little bit about Shinra and just sort of the stakes and what what's what's going on here and what their catalyst is here for for folks that may not know. Yeah. So as you as you play through the game, you you come to understand that Cloud is has been hired by this group called Avalanche to infiltrate this Mako reactor. Uh, Mako is essentially what we come to learn is the life force of the mm -hmm. planet, and Shinra, this um, well, I'll just call them evil. Uh, <laughs> I think evil, they earned it. Evil yeah. organization yeah. is literally using the life force of the planet to power all the entire city of Midgar and all of their tech. And Avalanche is like, nah, man, you're <laughs> killing the planet. That's yeah. not cool. So Avalanche hires Cloud. Cloud's a merc. He's in it for the money. Uh, but as they progress through the level, you even start to see these relationships build. That's excellent, and like so excited to see that in with again as we talked about like the the new voice acting and the more expressive characters and um, yeah, that's super super exciting. Yeah, so much comes across in just like you know a, a little glance from Cloud mm -hmm. or a, a sigh from a character, um, whereas before these these polygons had to to really emote to get that emotion yeah. across. But the the range that they have now with the fidelity that the development team has brought to light is just phenomenal. Yeah. Can we can we talk a little bit about the you know some of the details in combat here? Like I'm seeing like the the pressured status and staggered, and I'm familiar with some of these from you know um, previous Final Fantasies. But how does that fit in with uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake's combat. Yeah, so essentially uh, the most basic part of combat that you want to be aware of is uh, you want to build up your ATB charges. Your ATB charges in the lower right corner, there are these two blue bars. Mm -hmm. Each time you, you build up a charge, you can then use that charge to execute a stronger uh, ability or okay. cast a spell. So you can see Jarek flies into battle, he starts building up his ATB charges. Once one of those is 
is popped, he can go into his tactical mode, choose from a few different abilities. Mm. There he picked Focus Thrust, okay. and that does a whole lot more damage. Now, with the Stagger system, you see that orange bar at the bottom of an enemy's health. Um, if you can stagger an enemy, you'll get a damage multiplier. Okay. So these low-level guys, you don't have to worry too much about staggering. Um, they're kind of just fodder. You can you can swing the Buster Sword, take them out pretty quick. It'll Once, start to get more strategic. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Once you start getting into the, the tougher enemies, you're going to want to try to stagger them as fast as possible to make them vulnerable and then execute your strongest attacks to really oh, increase okay. that damage multiplier. So does that tie into like, you know, maybe elemental weaknesses or something down the line and that ties into the staggering? You got okay, it. Okay, cool. Awesome. <laughs> I, I love it. It's, it's just putting a finer point on some of the strategy. Um, Bet well, you've seen a few reactors. There you go. So how do we get to the bridge above Mako storage? <sighs> Ain't holding out on me, are you? Uh -oh. <laughs> Stamp scared to bite the hand that fed him? Or is he a loyal little doggy? <laughs> Have it your way, Mutt. We can do this with you, or we can do this without you. Different reactor, different layout. Depends when it was built. Never seen one like this, but I'll manage. So interesting thing to call out there. Yeah. Uh, Barrett calls Cloud Stamp, and I haven't yeah. really explained what that is, but he keeps referring Damn, to him as a good. mutt or a dog, yeah. uh, or kind of lap dog of Shinra. Um, and that's a, a new thing that is fleshed out even further. Uh, I won't I won't spoil too much, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, you can you can look for Stamp or more of Stamp as you go through. Okay, the game. interesting. I am I am curious because there's just so many opportunities to kind of tweak the relationship and how it unfolds. Mm -hmm. You know, even though I, I understand they're going to have you know a, a similar rapport throughout the game, but just how it unfolds. Um, yeah, it, and, I, and I know you were saying earlier, you know, there was the shot where he's looking up at the Mako reactor that you guys were saying you tried to make it a one by one as much as you, you could replicating from the original. How much would you guys say you were like, let's just can do our own thing, have it fleshed out a little bit more of an original vision versus the recreation? I think the, the whole game is an amazing example of the dev team finding that balance yeah. of like determining where it's appropriate for that that throwback and that callback, mm -hmm. but then layering in the right amount of new details yeah. and making these slight tweaks and changes to to make it a more involved and modern experience. Careful in there. So here we have Avalanche continuing their their way through the reactor, trying to make their way to the core. Yeah, uh, it's it, it's just really impressive seeing you know like Jesse and Biggs and Wedge here just like. <laughs> they, they were always kind of supporting characters in the original, but I'm just like immediately a little bit more attached and invested in them just, just due to just how great it, they look and, and how much more detailed they are. Yeah, I mean, I think we, we, we always loved those characters yeah. originally, but um, boy, yeah. they really stand out now. <laughs> yeah, they do. Jesse particularly has, has become, even before the game has been released, has become a, a huge fan favorite, oh, really? which has been really cool and exciting to see. I love her armor. It's awesome. A classic. That's the Shinra logo, right? That is the yes. Shinra logo. And those must be some baddies. Ooh. Ooh. Let's listen in. These sewer rats appear to call themselves Avalanche, sir. We are currently investigating whether they belong to the same group that made the attempt on your life. Rest assured, our inquiries will not take much longer. Look like nice guys. This whole <laughs> purpose is to drain the planet dry. While you sleep, while you eat, while you sit, it's here sucking up Mako. It doesn't rest and it doesn't care. It's you important do exposition. Yeah. What Mako is, don't you? Mako right. is the lifeblood of our world. <laughs> <laughs> She's heard this shark. before, yeah. yeah. <laughs> This old now speech. You think yeah. happen when it's all gone, huh? Answer me! You gonna stand there and pretend you can't hear the planet crying out in pain? I know you can! You really hear that? <laughs> Damn straight I do! Get help. <laughs> That's so good. Just love just bears passion yeah. and then Cloud's just apathetic. Yeah, yeah whatever. It's so good. 
and it's just less about the planet i love that that mix like the the sort of contrast of how how you know again like detailed and stunning the visuals are but it still has that that layer of like quirkiness that the original did and 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 you know many final fantasies have that layer of quirkiness and it just is such a nice combination because bar bear's just bigger than life and so he's got a lot of personality yeah you listening merc one false move. Speaking of it, yeah. we're going to get to see him in action. Just um, in that is yeah. exciting. Well, so much for having Cloud do all the fighting. There are some places a sword just can't reach. If only we had a guy with a giant <laughs> yeah. gun. Yeah, attached to his arm. Just bear with him for me, would you? <sighs> just bear with Baron. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love that so much. <laughs> Should have asked for more money. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Uncomfortable laugh. It's so good. So here we get to see Barrett in action. Obviously, Cloud's more of a melee mm -hmm. focused character with his Buster Sword. He likes to get right up there in the enemy's face and, and take him out. But when you've got something out of range, that's where Barrett comes in. Cool. Um, he's got the giant gun arm. Um, each character does work and feel totally differently. Mm -hmm. Even something as simple as dodging between each character oh, really? does have a different feel huh. and motion to it. Um, so, yeah, obviously you're going to have a more melee focused or more ranged character. Uh, but even uh, the character's special attacks are totally okay. different. Um, and, you know, fans are going to have their preference of, of who they play with. Uh, there's going to be opportunities where you're going to want to probably use a particular character. Yeah. Um, but if you have a favorite, then you can use them as much as you want. You can swap between characters on the fly. It's literally just a button press oh. to go back and forth between Cloud or, or Barrett. Um, or eventually you'll get a third party member in combat, which is super, super fun. Okay. And then it becomes this act of like juggling the characters and their ATB bars, uh, making sure that you're using them as effectively as possible to do the okay. most damage in the shortest amount of time. And it, it looks a little different from the original in that you're not waiting for like a turn-based level. Like when you're fighting as Cloud, it looks like Barrett is still fighting until you take over as him. Exactly. So any when you're playing in real time, any character you're not directly controlling mm -hmm. will be uh, controlled by the AI. Right. They will only use, the AI will only use basic attacks. Mm -hmm. So it'll just attack with, you know, Barrett's gun without using any of the ATB charges. So it, it is up to you then to tell Barrett when to use those ATB charges. Right. So you're telling him when to use the stronger abilities or cast spells or use items. And that's when time slows and you get a little more tactical and exactly. cool. Exactly. Or you can use shortcuts. And this is where the team found this way to harken back to the original, but is they're offering all these different options for how to play the game to cater to various play styles. Okay. So the way I typically play is uh, kind of a mix between using tactical mode, which starts out in real time, and then you get your ATB charges, you enter tactical mode uh, to slow down time, you go through the menu, select your abilities and spells, and then deal a bunch of damage. Okay. Um, but there's certain shortcuts I like to use to keep things going fast. And the shortcuts are hotkeys that you set where you don't have to enter tactical mode. You can execute the, the stronger abilities and spells on the fly okay. and keep the action moving super, super fast. Okay, cool. So if, a, if one of someone on your team had, like, say, an AoE attack that you knew just was going to be, like, really useful no matter what the circumstance, you could just have that in a shortcut, fire that out. But if you knew it was, like, a, a move that you really want to make sure you hit this enemy and go in, uh, you could be more deliberate with it. Yeah, what I what I like to do when I'm playing the game is I set my most commonly used abilities to my shortcuts and I'm just like popping those left and right. Cool. And then for example, if if there's a elemental spell that I'm not using all that commonly, maybe I won't have that on a shortcut. Okay. And I'll have to go into tactical mode in order to use it. Okay. So here we're fighting a tech based enemy. Lightning magic's gonna do the most Got damage. It. So you'll see Jarek going into the spells, hitting lightning and doing a ton of damage to that cool. thing. So is is uh you know, when we just you know saw Jarek switch between Cloud and Barrett, like I see, it's you know, uh, Punisher mode versus like charge, and is that what you were getting into before the difference between these characters? Yeah. So, so you can see Barrett has overcharge and charge okay. uh, on his triangle. Uh, essentially, what that does if if his if his overcharge is full, he can press triangle to do an attack, and that quickly fills up his his ATB charge. Okay. Mm. But it depletes, and then you can you have to like jam on triangle in order oh. to recharge, overcharge. Okay. Got it. Cloud is totally different. Pressing triangle with cloud alternates between operator and punisher mode. Okay. In operator mode, 
Uh, Cloud uh, has kind of decent cadence of attacks. He does a good amount of damage just with his standard swings, and he can block when you hit the block button. Okay. If you switch to Punisher, he loses the ability to block, but he gains the ability to counter melee attacks. Okay. And he does slightly more damage. So there's a trade-off there between Operator and Punisher for Cloud. Okay, cool. Um, and that's just like kind of scratching the surface of the strategy that you have for each of these characters. Yeah, I imagine, you know, if you're going up against a new enemy type, maybe you want to do Operator and, and be a little bit more defensive. And if you're feeling really confident, switch over to Punisher and just mix and match that way. Cool. Yeah, and, and uh, like a lot of the guards in this level, they'll, they're will they shooting at you with guns. That's where blocking comes in really Got handy. Um, later on, there are some enemies that are really hard to take down. They're mm -hmm. really fast, but they're pure melee. Mm -hmm. okay. That's where switching to Punisher comes in, where... You just you get ready to counter. Cloud will automatically counter as long as you're holding down mm. the holding down the button, um, and then that allows you to knock them down and do more damage. Cool. <laughs> and I need to practice sliding down a ladder like that. That's seems dangerous, but worth it. So so now they finally made their way into the the actual interior of the reactor. Yeah. You see all of the green glow from the Mako, uh, and they're still still working their way down there, trying to to get ready to plant that bomb. It's great just hearing all this banter as they're moving around, mm -hmm. though. <laughs> just like that, the watch and learn. I love them. That's so good. So there, Derek did a, a phenomenal job of kind of switching back and forth. He took out the, uh, the closer enemies with Cloud using the melee attacks, and then quickly switched to Barret to take out that sentry gun because Cloud can't reach it with a buster sword. Now, if you do have the right materia equipped, Cloud can use ranged attacks, such mm -hmm. as casting uh, fireballs or lightning. Okay. Um, and... So for those of you who remember Materia, yeah. Materia's back. It works very similarly to the way it did in the original. If you don't know anything about Materia, now's your chance to learn. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, oh, yeah, let's, let's, let's listen in on this. All right, let's see if Little Stamp really can bite the hand that feeds. Hmm. Go on, do the honors. Prove to me you're the man Tifa says you are, that you're one of us. Never said I was. I'm just here for the paycheck. Ooh. Cool. <laughs> then do the damn job! <laughs> <laughs> Sounds hard. I love a sleeveless turtleneck. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting seeing how these moments get visualized. Yeah. So much more subtlety involved. It's yeah. a little foreshadowing. Control. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm fine. What about the timer? You call Merc. So here we have our first choice. Okay. Uh, let's give Jarek plenty of time. We're gonna pick 30 minutes. Okay. Let's okay. Make a less <gasps> leisurely pace. That long enough for you? We got 30 more minutes here, yeah. right? Yeah, we're good. <laughs> we're good. You double crossing! But it's nice to see that there's these like subtle little yeah. moments that you get to choose. And just when choices like that occur in a, a remake, it's just sort of like, oh, interesting. I'm paying attention. So this is a, a iconic, you know, boss battle. The uh, first legit here. boss fight mm -hmm. in the game, the Scorpion Sentinel. So here you actually have, like, you know, Kristen, you were talking yeah. about that banter earlier. The banter in this fight will actually help you strategize. So oh. right there at the beginning, Cloud tells Barrett, we got to use lightning magic. Yeah. Okay, so not was that not quite staggered, but you, oh, the weakness kind of... Pressure. You can knock an enemy down, okay. and then you can stagger an enemy. Okay. Staggering is, like, knocking them down will make them vulnerable. Okay. Staggering them makes them vulnerable and gives you the damage multiplier. Okay. And we, we talked about how, like, you know, thunder, and specifically, like, on a robot like this, that um, thunder is effective. Are there positional advantages, you know, whether you're behind an enemy or, or is, it, is that not so much uh, a case with it? Great question. We're going to find out. All right. Very, very okay, soon. Cool. So one of the things I'm I just love so excited. about the boss fight <laughs> is that there are multiple stages to it. Okay. So at the beginning, you're just learning, okay, it's a tech-based enemy. i got to use lightning to take this thing down. It's jumping around, launching rockets at you, shooting you in the face. And then the, phase ch and then the, the boss fight changes. starts to change. Cool. He moves. Oh, my god. And now he puts up a barrier. Oh, okay. Got it. Loved that transition. That was awesome. Like, and taking full full advantage of like sort of the, th the more 3D, you know, 
gameplay. So what's your brilliant plan, genius? <laughs> so here, Cloud's hitting this thing. The barrier's up. Yeah. He's not doing any damage to it. Barrett moves, in, Barrett moves into the rear and starts attacking it. Okay. And is able to kind of whittle it down. Um, but really what he's got to do is focus on that field generator, right. which you can only really reach from the back. Okay, got it. Interesting. And this is just the, the moment in the game where you really got to start sitting up and paying attention to your strategy and, and managing both characters. It's, it's uh, I think I've played this section before, and like it, it, was, it was a good challenge. I really had to start thinking really tactically. So there, a little reminder that, hey, when you're in the red, Maybe uh, maybe heal. You know, self care is important. Self care is important. Yeah, uh, you could you could heal each other. You could heal yourself. Oh man. Yeah, I love the effects. Just everything happening from like the the ash in the air to the sparks underneath every <laughs> single leg as it moves, and then the sort of like uh, the field that's up. Um, there's just so much going on. Don't compliment the dragon squad. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so good. I love these interactions. So there so you much. can see the, the barrier's just starting to go down. Yeah. If Jarek's able to do a little more damage, he'll, he'll be able to bring it down. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Mentioned its sights. Oh, and I can oh, see that the, the, uh, the field is turning red. Exactly. So. Okay. There we go. Now's our chance. Give it everything you Get got. in there. <laughs> Well, Now's the point where you just want to wail on it, yeah. use your abilities, hit it with lightning. Do everything you can. Looks oh, like this music. Barrett's so a little low on it. MP, yeah. so if we had an ether, that would come in handy. Awesome. Wow. Two hit points Cloud's left. Healing. That was critical. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, for the, the soundtrack for these moments as well, Like, what was the process like for, for updating it now? Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's like goes back to what I was talking about before, yeah. which is like, okay, we're, we're taking this iconic game, and it's so many different parts of it are iconic. Like it's personally one of my favorite soundtracks. So to hear these soundtracks brought to life in a new way mm -hmm. is just, oh, it's just, I get chills yeah. every single time, and it's just absolutely amazing. Uh, each time we have a new trailer and we have a new track that yeah. the fans get to hear, people are just like losing their minds. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's, uh, you know, just like so, so rich and like, it's one of those things where, you know, obviously it's undeniably exciting for anyone who's, who's never played Final Fantasy VII before, but then for those fans that are returning, it's like, this is sort of what I, it sounded like in my memory, you know, because these are larger than life fights. Jarek, you're doing great. <laughs> Make sure you know that. I gotta hurry up and help Cloud out. So, oh, is Cloud, Cloud grabbed? Yep. Oh, no. Oh, oh good job. Okay, so, so, yeah, there are certain enemies that uh, will, that can either grab you or pin you. Uh, what the Scorpion Sentinel did is it actually picked Cloud up, and you have a small window of time uh, with your other character to deal a certain ah. amount of damage. And if you deal that damage, you'll free the character. If you don't deal enough damage, that character that's been pinned will take a ton of damage. Uh, okay. So good job, Jarek. Yeah, nice. Gotta look out for my boy. That's right. Oh, what's about to happen? So here we go into another Ooh. phase of the fight. Oof. Get the sunroof going. <laughs> oh, that's new. Some new pieces to hide behind. That's right. Watch the tail. You don't want to be hit by that laser. Ah, see again, the banter is giving a that's heads good. up. And of course, you would know this as a former, you know, Shinra uh, soldier. Yes, contrary to popular belief, you definitely do not want to attack when the tail is up. That's right. <laughs> Good time to heal so up. Good time to heal yep. up, exactly. Smart. Take care of the boys. Barrett's free <laughs> to do some damage. So now you just gotta go in and like wail on it. Oh, jerk. Now this whole time, Barrett and Cloud have obviously been taking some damage. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, one thing that we haven't talked anything about yet uh -huh. is the limit oh, break system. Of course. Um, so dealing damage builds up your ATB charges. Taking damage builds up your limit break meter. Mm. Once your limit break is full, that's when you can really deal some damage. Bust out. Is it Omni Slash? Is that the... <laughs> There's a, there's a few limit breaks few? to choose okay. from. We're going to get, hopefully we'll get to see Cloud's uh, first limit getting, break that he has ability. Okay. That little bar Braver. That's what I'm thinking of. Okay. So the uh, the limit break Cloud has equipped right now is Cross Slash. Oh, Cross Slash. And we're slash. getting okay. so close. Ooh. Oh, that was very bear. dramatic and slow hit motion. Hit by some debris. Uh-oh. Better hide, better hide, better hide. 
Heal good up good positioning. Nice, nice. <laughs> what a great pose. <laughs> Go, go, go. Okay, so there's an opportunity there when it's targeted on Cloud that Barret can pop out. That's yeah. okay, cool. Exactly. Now one one tip I do want to throw out with the limit break is you can whiff them. <laughs> oh. Um, and I have in in very that embarrassing oh, situations trying to demo the game. Sounds um, like a look at my so future. <laughs> the, the Scorpion. Sentinel in, uh, specifically, you can see it moves around a lot on the field. Yeah. If you don't time it right, Ooh. you could potentially miss that swing. So oh, don't okay. don't miss, Jarek. Oh, take take cover. So yeah. it's a situation where like maybe you want to wait until you you um, knock it down or stagger it and just make sure you don't miss. So if you can stagger it and then do a limit break, now you're dealing. You've got that damage multiplier, yeah. and that limit break is going to be even, even more better. effective. Mm. Interesting. Interesting. If only Barrett had some MP to use. I'll get that ether going. So that, oh, oh, getting close, getting close. So close. And here we're, we're entering the final phase. This thing does Cloud's not. limit break is ready to go. This thing's on its last legs. Oh does gosh. not give up. It's just a matter of time. Oh, hey, what's it doing now? <laughs> but it's healing itself. Yeah, oh no, oh no. Uh, so now the strategy shifts again. You really got to put the pressure on. What you can do is take out its legs to knock it down, make it more vulnerable. Perfect. And once we can do that, that's going to be the best time to use that limit break. Got it. We'll get that left leg Whittling down. It down. Oh, man. Oh, it's just hanging on for dear life. Battlefield is right, on now, fire. Now's the time. Oh, here it comes. Yeah. There. Is it enough? Yeah. Yes. Come on. It is enough. Oh, finished oh, it in style. Nice. Wow. Jarek. Impressive. Excellent. Almost like that was planned. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing we set that whole 30 minute timer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, the timer hasn't started yet. Oh, right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we got plenty of time. Man, no problem. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Those are some death throws. The ball. Right, bro. There we okay, go. Now. There it goes. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> See ya. What an ending. Nicely done, Jerry. Well done. Thank Exterminated. You. Huh. you hear that? Damn thing showed you how it's done. <laughs> Come on. We've got to move. Be now I gotta get out of here. Exactly. Go, go, go. Always remember to heal. Good call. Good call, call yeah. Thing. Good call to do it right away, too. Mm -hmm. I probably would have been like, do, 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 do. <laughs> you never know what's next. Big regrets. He's not as fast going up the ladders as he was going down. Hey, you know, he just went through a lot. That's <laughs> true. Yeah, he's <laughs> taking out that squad. Yeah, yeah. I understand. We can't all be good at cardio. That's that's fair. Barrett's wasting no time <laughs> yeah, getting out of there. He's a big guy, but fast. I love their voices. I'm gonna say it's not just the voice actors; it's like every part of this, yeah. all of the sound design is just completely modernized. One thing that's really cool is, uh, you know, how Cloud kind of like will stitch together his attacks, and if an enemy is, you know, across sort of the the battle zone, he'll kind of leap or thrust towards them. Is that just something he automatically does? So Cloud will close the distance with one of his standards attacks okay. automatically. Nice. But when uh, that last attack that you saw Jarek do, that focus thrust, yeah. that's a that's an attack that gives him range. Okay. So Jarek actually kind of sized the enemy up, okay. realized he's at a distance, wanted to do some extra damage, and picked the ability that gives him that, that extra step. Okay, cool. What a nice guy, you see? <laughs> My hero. Hey, we'll link up over there. Look after Jesse. I already am. <laughs> yeah, I'm right here. Come this way. Nice. This route should lead us straight to Barrett. Probably. Probably. <laughs> Maybe. There we go. Love it. I just love it. Oh, and the music like really picks up in yep. these moments. It's the detail of this. Everything's starting to kind of shake apart here. I love listening to the music and how it changes on every scenario. Yeah. It sounds familiar, but different. Yeah. I was going to say, Jarek, before we started recording, you were saying that Final Fantasy VII was like 
such an important game for you. It was just like this lifeline for you for the original PlayStation. So what does it feel like to, to be playing a new version of it, basically? It's honestly, it's unbelievable. It's, it's like, it's everything I imagined it was back then, but now fully realized. Mm -hmm. And it, it's hard to put into words that, you know, it's something that you imagine when you were a kid and half of it was in your head. Yeah. But now it's it's here and it's real. And it's it's what one thing that I'm so excited about it, this remake for is is that you have in your mind's eye what one approach to a remake could be and it's kind of I think inherent inherently limited. But then what a beautiful remake does is give you something you didn't even know you wanted. And I think that's what this is really, really yeah. delivering to people. Yeah, I think that's that's really where the dev team has yeah. nailed it. Such a sucker for the, the, the slowdown effect yeah. in the tactical mode. It looks so the, good. The movement and like how just smooth it is, it's just like entrancing. Mm -hmm. I can't stop watching. And the colors change a yeah. little bit and it's just it's so stylish. Because I, I appreciate how fast the particles fly and how dramatic it is uh, when things are moving in, in real time, but you just really appreciate on this other level when it's slowed down. Now, I might, I might be a little biased, but I have to say <laughs> it does not ever get old. Oh. <laughs> it's so awesome. That's good to hear. Now here, Barrett could stop and fight this sweeper, or he could just run away. Okay. You can actually flee from fights. Okay. Um, so if you get far enough away, there will be a little notice that pops up at the top of the screen that says you're fleeing. Okay. And so, I mean, hey, he's only got 27 minutes left. Yeah. Yeah. He's got to get his way out of here. Right. It's because a bomb he, about to go off. Yeah, there, there's a literal bomb that is about <laughs> to go off. Very nice. <laughs> I like how he apologizes for destroying them. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Robots got feelings, too. It's true, and you know, it wasn't their choice to fight. Oh, I love moments like that. <laughs> Pausing while he's in the air. Oh, there's Barrett. Oh, yep. That was easy. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> I love it. They're just trying to one-up each other so much. I love it. Now, as your party fills out a little bit more, do your other allies also banter with each other? Yes. Nice. Do. Cool. That's, um, I love that. Mm -hmm. So here, here we, uh, we have that enemy I was talking about earlier that is more melee focused. So Barrett has switched his, uh, his mode for Cloud so that he's automatically countering those melee attacks. Mm. Uh, makes it a little easier to take those guys down. They're still pretty tough. Um, so yeah, if you can stagger them quickly, knock them down, deal that, that damage, and you'll be good to go. Cool. Uh, and have you already talked about like just what the like the max party size is? Like how many you have? You can have three party three? members. Okay, in cool. All right, max. awesome. That's great. Was that the same as the original? That is yeah. the okay, same cool. as the original. Awesome. That's it's right. a good focused amount. I like that. Oh, and he's just like giving a, a little cue to have Cloud heal, which is appreciated. You get in the throes of it, you might forget. Forget to look down. Yeah. yeah. And it felt really natural. Oh, what a friendly guy. Look Barrett. at that. <laughs> Healing cloud like that. <laughs> this guy's wily. Yeah. It's so interesting, though, to be able to see, like, you can get all around these enemies. And it's it's not just, you know, straight from the front. And seeing that design aspect just take off is really fun. Yeah. Don't overdo it. <laughs> but don't overdo it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. No, Barrett says no such thing. Right. Using that range to his advantage. Nice. So we got one more sentry gun. Does that do it? Oh yeah, thunder. Nice. Short work of it. I could have done that on my own. <laughs> I already leveled up too. Nice. So yeah, I mean it's a uh, obviously an iconic role playing game, but a role playing game. So still, you know, get defeating enemies, gathering XP, getting stronger. Exactly. Okay. Um, and. New for, for Remake is an ab ability or the option to upgrade your weapons. Okay. Oh, nice. Um, so if you really, really love that Buster Sword, you can keep it around Go all for in maybe, on a, it? maybe a little longer this time. That's awesome. Sir. So there we saw the bam bomb did a, a little bit of damage. Yeah. But these bad guys just not satisfied. No. That's another thing I, I love as a, as a big time fan is expanding on what we think we already know yeah. and showing kind of what's going on 
uh, in the background of Shinra or even elsewhere in the game. That's mm -hmm. great. But just really just layering in more and expanding the world and story more than ever. Yeah. So you get that story that you loved, but born, even more. Born. It's great. <coughs> oh. <laughs> I love this little moment between the two of them. You just, Barrett has this big bombastic personality and he's very anxious and Cloud's just cool, confident. Yeah. What are you going to do? We're riding an elevator, man. Yeah. Almost out. Get us out of here, Jesse. Doors open. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have a lot of time here. Pick up the paint, people. Okay, oh, so yeah. meeting back up the rest of the team. Yeah, yes. we got to get out of here. Place is shaking apart. Can you walk? If I couldn't, believe me, you'd be the first to know. <laughs> I'll take that as a yes. Watch out, this is dangerous. Oh, that was so okay, that slick. Was yeah. Pretty cool. All right, come on. That was nothing. <laughs> yeah, Midgar's like, oh, yeah. what's going on? Free fireworks tonight. Oh, it looks so good. I love the car designs. I know. So cool. The world building here. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, it was a reactor, so there goes the power. Mission almost accomplished. So here's a, a little taste okay. of what's to come. Things to come. All right. Well, maybe this is a good opportunity for us to, uh, to wrap things up, but. Um, Neil and Jarek, thank you so much for yeah. popping by and, and showing us this demo for Final Fantasy VII Remake. Uh, not too much longer to wait. It's April 10th? April, April 10th, 10th 2020. It? I can't believe how close that date it's... is. Uh, super excited. Um, yeah, we're just we're really, really looking forward, not just to, to bring this back to fans and give them a chance to experience the game in a whole new way, but really for for newcomers, people who have always heard of all these iconic characters can now experience it for the first time in the most grand way possible. Awesome. Well, thanks for watching. PlayStation.